Classical Tibetan refers to the language of any text written in Tibetic after the Old Tibetan period, though it extends from the 7th century until the modern day, it particularly refers to the language of early canonical texts translated from other languages, especially Sanskrit. The phonology implied by classical Tibetan orthography is basically identical to the phonology of Old Tibetan, but the grammar varies greatly depending on period and geographic origin of the author. Such variation is an under-research topic. In 816, during the reign of King Sadnalegs, literary Tibetan underwent a thorough reform aimed at standardizing the language and vocabulary of the translations being made from Indian texts, which resulted in what is now called Classical Tibetan. Nouns Structure of the noun phrase Nominalizing suffixes pa or ba and ma are required by the noun or adjective that is to be singled out. Po or bo masculine and mo feminine are used for distinction of gender. The plural is denoted, when required, by adding the morpheme r and ams. When the collective nature of the plurality is stressed, the morpheme dag is instead used. These two morphemes combine readily, e.g., r and ams dag a group with several members, and dag rnams, several groups. Cases The classical written language has ten cases Absolutive, unmarked morphologically Genitive, g, g, k, i, ye Agentive, gis, gyis, kyis, s, kyis. Locative, na. Allative, plit. Terminative, ru, su, tu, du, r. Commutative, dang. Ablative, nas. Alative, loss. Comparative, ba, case morphology is affixed to entire noun phrases, not to individual words, i.e. grup inflection. Traditional Tibetan grammarians do not distinguish case markers in this manner, but rather distribute these case morphemes, excluding dang and ba, into the eight cases of Sanskrit. Pronouns there are personal, demonstrative, interrogative and reflexive pronouns, as well as an indefinite article, which is plainly related to the numeral for 1. Personal pronouns As an example of the pronominal system of classical Tibetan, the Milarepa Rnam Thar exhibits the following personal pronouns. Like in French, the plural vous, qui, can be used a polite singular. Verbs Verbs do not inflect for person or number. Morphologically there are up to four separate stem forms, which the Tibetan grammarians, influenced by Sanskrit grammatical terminology, call the present, lta da, past, das pa, future, ma, ongs pa, and imperative, skul chigs, although the precise semantics of these stems is still controversial. The so-called future stem is not a true future, but conveys the sense of necessity or obligation. The majority of Tibetan verbs fall into one of two categories, those that express implicitly or explicitly the involvement of an agent, marked in a sentence by the instrumental particle, kyis etc., and those that express an action that does not involve an agent. Tibetan grammarians refer to these categories as dadad pa and dami dad pa respectively. Although these two categories often seem to overlap with the English grammatical concepts of transitive and intransitive, most modern writers on Tibetan grammar have adopted the terms voluntary and involuntary based on native Tibetan descriptions. Most involuntary verbs lack an imperative stem. Inflection Many verbs exhibit stem oblaut among the four stem forms, thus a or e in the present tends to become o in the imperative bide, bias, bya, byos, to do, and e in the present changes to a in the past and future, len, blangs, blang, longs, to take. In some verbs a present in i changes to u in the other stems. 
Di Zin, Bazung, Jizing, Zung. To take. Additionally, the stems of verbs are also distinguished by the addition of various prefixes and suffixes, thus s grub present, bs grubs past, bs grub future, s grubs imperative. Though the final s suffix, when used, is quite regular for the past and imperative, the specific prefixes to be used with any given verb are less predictable. While there is a clear pattern of b for a past stem and g for a future stem, this usage is not consistent. Only a limited number of verbs are capable of four changes, some cannot assume more than three, some two, and many only one. This relative deficiency is made up by the addition of auxiliaries or suffixes both in the classical language and in the modern dialects. Negation Verbs are negated by two prepositional particles, mi and ma. Mi is used with present and future stems. The particle ma is used with the past stem. Prohibitions do not employ the imperative stem, rather the present stem is negated with ma. There is also a negative state of verb med. There is not, there does not exist. The counterpart to the state of verb yod. There is, there exists. Honorifics As with nouns, Tibetan also has a complex system of honorific and polite verbal forms. Thus, many verbs for everyday actions have a completely different form to express the superior status, whether actual or out of courtesy, of the agent of the action, thus lta. C. Hun, G. Ziggs, Bide. Do. Hun, M. D. Zad. Where a specific honorific verb stem does not exist, the same effect is brought about by compounding a standard verbal stem with an appropriate general honorific stem such as M. D. Zad. See also Standard Tibetan References Further reading Bayer, Stephen. 1992. The Classical Tibetan Language. New York, State University of New York. Reprint 1993, Bibliotheca indo buddhica Series, 116, Delhi, Sri Saturu. Han, Michael. 2003. Schlüssel zum Lehrbuch der klassischen Tibetischen Schriftsprache Marburg, Indica et Tibetica Verlag. Hill, Nathan W. 2007. Personal Pronomena in der Lebensbeschreibung des Mi le Ross Pa, Capital 3. Zentralasiatisch Studien, 277 287. Hill, Nathan W. 2010. Brief Overview of Tibetan Verb Morphology. PDF, Lexicon of Tibetan Verb Stems as Reported by the Grammatical Tradition, Studia Tibetica, Munich, Bayerische Akademie der Wissenschaften, pp. XVXXII. Hill, Nathan W. 2012. Tibetan Loss, Nas, and Ba. Cahiers de Linguistique AC Orientale. 41, 1, 3 38. Hodge, Stephen. 2003. An Introduction to Classical Tibetan. Bangkok, Orchid Press Schwieger, Peter, 2006. Handbuch zur Grammatik der klassischen Tibetischen Schriftsprache. Halley, International Institute for Tibetan and Buddhist Studies, GmbH. Turnadra, Nicholas, 2003. Manual of Standard Tibetan, MST. Ithaca, NY, Snow Lion Publications, p. 479. Skal B. Jong, Gurmed, 1992. Le Clair Miroir, Ensonnement de la Grammaire Tibetaine, Trans. Heather Stoddard and Nicholas Tornadry, Paris, Editions Prajna External Links Tibetan in Digital Communication. 